It is autumn in the Napa Valley of California, and the rush is on to harvest this year's bounty of grapes. Time is of the essence. When you're growing grapes for wines, especially for reds, you're very much on the edge in terms of too much stress and too little stress. And so the push is always to do more stress. But if the weather is adverse in terms that it's too hot or it's too dry, you can go overboard. And so the risk really is because you're always on that, that knife edge, you can go too far. Daniel Bosch knows the risk in the high stakes business of vineyard production. He is the senior viniculturalist for Robert Mondavi Wines, making crucial decisions for this 1,500 acre operation one of Napa's largest. But he also understands that water is the key. Guessing wrongly about moisture beneath the surface can lead to a bad harvest. If the soil is too moist, the grapes grow fat and flavorless. Too dry, they just wither and die. What Bosch wants is the optimum amount of H2O to produce tiny grapes bursting with flavor. Deep blue jewels that offer the most delicious wine. Soil really determines an awful lot in quality in growing grapes and the water relations in the soil is really the primary way that soil is involved in wine quality. But to date, determining soil moisture leaves much to be desired. Growers sometimes dig test holes to see below. This is spotty information at best. They also check the moisture inside the plant. Our current methods are all point measurements. So it's single vines or a few vines. But at the University of California, Berkeley, soil explorer Yoram Rubin thought he might have a better method. He contacted Daniel Bosch with a novel way to see below the surface. GPI stands for Ground Penetrating Radar. GPI is a system that sends a electronic signal into the ground and record it after it travels in the ground for a certain while. And we then take the recorded signals back to the lab and we interpret them. We had the instrumentation, but it had to be modified for use in vineyards. And more importantly, we had to develop the methodology for interpreting of the signal. It's high risk research. This technology was unproven when we started. It's on the interface between basic research and applied research. What we found in CSREES is openness and a willingness to take the risk. They, in fact, allowed us to do it. There was no other way. Back in Napa, a prototype GPR device is put to the test. Assembling the maze of cables, connections, and computers is left to the deft hands of another soil explorer, Catherine Grote. I was the primary data collector and processor here, so I would come out on a typical day and collect data. The great thing about radar is that you get really high density data. As the unit is dragged across the surface, it sends a high frequency electromagnetic pulse down into the soil. The signal is then reflected back to a receiver and recorded into a laptop computer. The speed of the transmitted and reflected signals varies with the soil's water content. Pulses move slower through wetter soils, faster in drier ones. Here, very quickly, we actually monitor a very large area and get a three-dimensional image of the soil. And with that, get a comprehensive image of soil moisture and control the stress irrigation process. The second advantage is related to harvesting. When they get an image or information about the soil moisture content, with that they can control irrigation. They can control the maturation of the fruit such that the fruit from the entire block matures at around the same time. They can send the crew just one time. With the strong competition to California wine coming from the New World wine, Australia, Chile, Argentina, there's no choice. First of all, that really helps in understanding how deep the roots are, where the water is, how fast it's starting to run out, and that makes farming easier. And the ground penetrating radar, the GPR, measures multiple points, and so we can get sort of a 3D look of what's going on rather than just one point. Having that picture allows us to be more efficient in designing it so that we don't, after the fact, have to make adjustments to how we planted. 
taste them down. Yeah. 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 Good, uh, the ability to better plan new vineyards is a huge advantage for Bosch. Almost ready. Napa is known for its rolling hills and varied earth that rapidly change from loam to sand to gravel. Over 30 types of soil have been identified in the valley. GPR will allow viniculturalists to efficiently match their plantings to variations in the subsurface terrain. And there are environmental advantages for California, a state that uses more water than any other. The larger the pressure on water resources, there will be a growing pressure to control irrigation. And this is not just because we need to save water, but because water can actually percolate below the root zone and carry with it pesticide deeper into the ground. So you really want to irrigate as much as is needed and not a drop more. And this you can do with our technology. I'm just very excited about the potentials of this technique. If you read the manuals on how to measure water content, GPR isn't even really mentioned yet. But as we develop this, say in three to five years, I think it has very far-reaching potential for both precision agriculture and more traditional farming techniques. The future for the technology looks bright. Catherine Grote now uses GPR in Wisconsin to determine nitrate content through electric conductivity. This CSR EES funded research helps Midwest farmers determine optimum fertilizer applications for their fields. Yoram Rubin is exploring ways to use the radar for monitoring moisture below highways with hopes of better predicting road maintenance needs. And for Dan Bosch, he remains on the land. The French have a, a concept of what they call terroir and it's really the concept of the place, of the environment, of the soil, of the people, of the history. It's really all of those. A lot of it is experience and we're hoping that with the techniques like GPR that we can make some jumps ahead and I think we're starting to see some of the same advantages that took other people you know, hundreds of years. With GPR, I can imagine at some point you could attach it to a tractor and go down every few rows and, and have a good understanding of what your various parts of the vineyards are doing. CSR EES funds soil conservation projects that improve farm tillage and cultivation to reduce soil erosion. An added benefit? Cleaner air for better human health by reducing dust particulate.